can't come in tomorrow and say, oh, I think I'll add a new pizza oven today, and then tomorrow I'll take it back out and see you know, how my productivity is, is going. So the thing that you mess with or the thing that you can control or manipulate in the short run is labor. All right, so marginal product, again, is the additional output you get from adding one more unit of, in our case, labor. Um, we did, here's the graph that drives the PPF, and there's, there's also a cost curve in here that we're going to look at, we have looked at. Um, diminishing marginal product is kind of that uh, answer that sort of answers everything. Um, why things fall at, a, at an increasing rate, why productivity increases at a decreasing rate, all of the explanations in economics, at least as far as we're concerned with respect to productivity, revolves around diminishing marginal product. Um, and I would, the, the, being able to define it is one thing, that's pretty easy, just the, the diminishing marginal product is you add another unit of input, labor, you get increasing output but at a decreasing rate. Right? And the reason for that is diminishing marginal product and what causes that, in a nutshell, is inefficiencies um, as you add more input. And what causes that, in layman's terms, is that people start bumping into each other. Just that, that there's not enough room on the pizza line or in the, in the coffee shop. Or if I'm making a pizza, I have to wait for somebody to pull you know, the, the previous pizza out before I can put mine in. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to think of, like the apple orchard example. Did we do that in here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the apples, so the good ones get picked by the first person and the second person has to work a little bit harder. And it's not that they're less productive workers. They are technically, but they're not less hard working. It's just that they're less efficient workers because they have to work harder to get each unit of input processed. Okay. So be ready to, um, when you do the quiz, and there's possibility, I mean, it, it's not like it's, the sky is blue. True, false, diminishing marginal product. Don't do that. But if, if you get down to the point where there's a, a question that it's kind of, you know, why is something happening and one of the possible answers is diminishing marginal product, it, it's a good answer. It's, it's probably right. I mean, use, use your common sense, but of course that, that's a, a good encompassing thing. Um, everybody clear on this graph? Any questions about this? So units of labor, zero and zero down here. You add one unit of labor, um, you get 10, I'm sorry, 50 units of output. Second unit of labor, an additional 40 units of output, total 90. Third, additional 30, total 120. Increasing at a decreasing rate due to diminishing marginal product. Now, yeah, I, I understand that in a pizza place that you, you might have economies of scale, you know, and you might actually see a curve that would, as you added more workers, your productivity would jump. You know, if, if you go from 50 to you add a second worker, you might go to 120. And, and I get that. I mean, it's not that it doesn't exist. And in the real world, of course, that's something to take into account. But we're, we're excluding that right now just to keep it simple. All right, so, so there are efficiencies and economies of scale and stuff. For accountants, it's the relevant range and stuff like that. But we're going we're gonna to ignore that for right now, just to make it easier. All right, so everybody OK with that? The productivity uh, starts up very steep and gets flatter and flatter due to diminishing marginal. Uh, this class, you know, we looked at all this already. I always think this is interesting. Um, diminishing marginal product, everybody okay with that? Any questions? Um, and last, okay, so the other side of the coin, just to make sure that we're clear, is the cost curve. And there's a little concept in here that, I, I know we've talked about it, but I want to just reiterate it again. Reiterate it, and, and make sure that you grab the concept out of here, which is, that, okay, so the, the PPF increases at a, at a decreasing rate. It gets flatter and flatter when you draw it. All right, and then the cost curve starts off very flat and gets steeper and steeper, all right? And the reason is the same. It's diminishing marginal product, all right? That's the reason, all right? So as you add workers, they become less and less efficient, all right? And then make sure that you understand the logic here, is that what's, what's happening is that the price per unit is going up. And it's not, it's not that all of a sudden a cookie is all, you know, costs more money to produce because of the, the dough and the chocolate chips or anything like that. It's just that as I hire a worker, the cost of the worker is linear. And so, you know, you're $10, I'm $10, next person's $10, everybody's $10. Then we divide the number of cookies that I make. If I make 10 cookies and, it, and I get paid $10 an hour, then, or $10 a, let's say, day makes it a little bit easier. 
So I get paid ten dollars a day and I make ten cookies, then the cost of each cookie is a dollar, right? Any problems with that? The, the thing is that as we add another worker, their pay is still ten dollars. Okay, so they get paid ten dollars, but they're experiencing diminishing marginal product. And so as a function of that, they, they're getting paid ten dollars the same as me, but their productivity instead of mine was ten, theirs is say five. Now each cookie is, is costing me as the entrepreneur, each cookie is costing me now $2. Does that make sense? Everybody follow that? That's really key. So it's not that, that the pay changes at all. It's not that there's some, you know, the, the price of dough goes up as I add more workers or anything like that. It's just that each worker is getting paid a linear amount in terms of, you know, per day or per hour or whatever. And their, their productivity is I add another worker, I'm getting less and less output. So each cookie is costing the entrepreneur more and more and more money per unit. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Everybody follow that? Would that be considered overhead? Say that again? Would that be considered overhead? Um, like overhead costs? Like is what that, are you thinking about? Like audience? when you have a business, your overhead is, you know, like your, your product that you're supplying and uh -huh. the, your labor, the things that cost you before you're, you know, before you get your profit back. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess it could be in the context that you're talking about. It depends. So, yes, but um, for us, probably it would okay. You know, I wouldn't try to label it like that because okay. it'll just get confusing. Okay. Another thing, you know. But, yeah, probably. Okay. So, this, does it slope like that because of diminishing marginal product? Is that what you said? That's right. Okay. And, and, and the answer for, like like I said, don't, don't be, use common sense. Um, but, you know, when the question is, is the sky blue, true or false, diminishing marginal product? Just go with true. <laughs> you know, just go with your gut on that one. But but when you do the exam and there's there is a couple of questions where, you know, it's it's you know, is it related to the you know uh, the, the the average variable cost or the diminishing marginal product? The d diminishing marginal product is a good answer because it explains why this gets steeper, why the PPI gets flatter. It, it's it's kind of an inclusive thing. Um, so everybody okay with that? Alright, so we have fixed and variable costs, and um, oh, just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. So fixed costs are the costs that don't change with output. That would be rent or the salary of an accountant or the, um, you know, uh, the advertising, something like that. It doesn't matter if we make 20 cookies or 5 billion cookies, the cost of the is always the same. Alright, and then the variable cost is the cost that varies with output. And it, it can get a little bit gray. And I think common sense makes it a little bit hard or a little bit um, ambiguous sometimes. Because when you're doing the exam, there'll be the question of, you know, blah, 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 is that a fixed cost or a, ver or a, fixed cost or a variable cost? And in your head, you, you start to logic out why it would be a fixed cost. And, and when you start thinking about, well, that would be a fixed cost, and you start thinking of reasons other than units of production, stop. And go back and just, just think about the question is, does this price go up as I make more units? And that, if, you, if that's the question you ask as you look at the question, you'll get it right. If you start trying to think it through and you start trying to say, well, you know, but the sky and, and then my cat got lost and then, you know, da, da, and you start getting into all these other reasons why it might or might not be, you should stop because you'll get it backwards. Then we'll, you'll see what I mean when we do it. So does it change with units of output? That's the question. Um, so, I think that's about where we left off, right? Somewhere in there. Okay. So, total cost, just some acronyms. This would give, on the exam, where there's a little reference to this, it's not a huge deal, but just save a little bit of time, hopefully. So, you have total fix, total variable, and total cost. <coughs>
Make a list and then you feel accomplished every time you check something off. Yeah, you're right. It's just, what, like, when it's just, when, you know, once I get started, I'll be okay, you know? It just, it's the starting. I can't, I can't <laughs> find a place to hook in to start it, you know? I just, I got nothing. I'm just like, I gotta watch TV. The cops <laughs> is on. <laughs> yeah, like, Survivor. <laughs> Say you were texting in your class. 
I'm just saying. Like, can be phone guy can in the trash can. You got what? I'm gonna stop my phone. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> horrific. <laughs> but I know you were just looking up very well. So, so the um, average costs are just the total variable or fixed cost divided by units of output. And so, um, in other words, if, if your fixed cost is $3 and you have one unit, then your average fixed cost is $3. Fixed cost is $3 and you have two units, then the average fixed cost is $1.50. All right?
but the average fixed cost is just divided by the number of units of output. So it's always going to be, you know, divided by two, then divided yeah. by ten, divided by fifty. It's always going to be falling, but yeah. always at a slower and slower rate. It, it, does that make sense? Okay, so the average fixed cost falls very fast at first and continues to fall, but at a decreasing rate. All right. The average variable cost, on the other hand, rises slowly at first, but it increases. Let, let's talk about the composition of it here. So we have our variable cost, which is here. It's 30 cents, 80 cents, dollar fifty. And so we have diminishing marginal product here. So each unit is costing us, in this case, 30 and then 50, and then 70, and then 90 more cents, all right? The average variable cost is the number, is the variable cost divided by the units of output. And so, oops, sorry. All right, so the variable cost here is one unit divided, is 30 cents of variable cost divided by one is 30 cents. Here, the variable cost for the second, for two units is 80 cents divided by the number of units of output, which is two, so the average variable cost is 40 cents. Does that make sense? Okay, so for the, if you make three units, then our variable cost is $1.50, three units of output, so $1.50 divided by three is 50 cents. Quote, clear? Would you consider like, minimum wage to be a fixed cost and then the, it's probably a little more complicated than it needs to be, but like the difference in wages of your different employees, would those be variable costs? Like everybody makes at least eight, so you would establish that as your fixed. And then, you know, you've got this person over here makes $2 more, this person over yeah. here makes 50 cents more. Would you consider those variable, yeah. like the difference? Know. I don't know about that. I would think, I would consider wage by and large a variable cost because you can, you can lay somebody off or add somebody <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, I know what you're saying. Is, is there There's a, a difference in wage levels, yeah. yeah. Is there minimum wage is a fixed cost. By hiring one worker, you automatically have to pay that. Uh -huh. And then anything above that is variable. Uh -huh. But I, I would say no. I think, I think, in my opinion, wages are variable costs. All because right. you, can, you can add or, or subtract workers day okay. in and day out. I mean, maybe not like that. Uh, Police department. You can't just say, "Oh, you know, Officer Jones, sorry, you're not working today." You can't necessarily do that, but yeah. you know, certainly at a, at a job that's mm -hmm. seasonal or something. So you know, people come into work, sorry, don't work for you today. Mm -hmm. you know, that's a variable cost okay. to me. Um, okay. okay. So here's our, our average um, fixed cost falls at a decreasing rate because it's getting divided amongst a greater and greater number of units of output. All right, average. Variable cost increases at an increasing rate. Yes, sir. Is the fixed, average fixed, that's never going to reach zero? Never. Never. It's really close. It'll get really, really close. Because, and, and think about, here's an example right out of the book, is that, like, Microsoft, they make, like, the chip, and all their, all their costs are on the front end for all the research and development. And then to stamp out another chip, the fixed cost in stamping out another chip is nothing. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, like you said, I mean, there comes a point when you're talking about, like, some m &Ms, you know what I mean? Is that th there's, like, virtually no cost to produce one more, but it's there, you know? And so if you talk about m &Ms, there comes a point where it's, <laughs> you know, it gets down to that for sure, but never quite zero. There's always a cost. There's always a cost. Even if it's yeah. minute. Even if it's very small. Okay, so the average variable cost. Does everybody see where that's coming from? Is that clear? So if you just take the variable cost and divide by the units of output. Average variable cost, and I would write this down, right under what you just wrote. Average variable cost increases at an increasing rate due to diminishing marginal product. Average variable cost. At an increasing rate? Yes. Mm -hmm. Average variable cost increases at an increasing rate due to <coughs> diminishing marginal product. So, so the cost of producing the, the one more unit, one more unit, one more unit is constantly going up. Your variable cost is always going up because of diminishing marginal product. All right, which gives rise to the second curve, which is the average variable cost curve, which is here. And the average variable cost curve increases, but at an increase in rate. So it starts off relatively flat. I mean, here it's going to be, but it starts off relatively flat. flat and then as, it, as we produce more and more, it gets steeper and steeper. And that 
that's as low as it's going to get. And that's called the efficient scale. And as a producer, what are you looking for? The efficient scale. You're looking to produce where your costs are minimized. Go ahead. You're talking about this one? Yeah. Okay, because there's a, okay, let me back up a little bit. You understand that average total cost is just the summation of variable, or average variable and average fixed, right? Cool with that? If you look at the average total cost curve, what's it doing? It starts up at 330, and then what's it doing? What's the next number? 190. Okay, so big drop, yeah? So it drops from 330 down to 190. Why is, why is that drop so significant? What's happening? Why, why is there such a big drop in average total costs? Because? Because at first you have a small denominator. A small, you're, you're on the right track. What happened, what's happening is at first, your average fixed cost is falling very fast, right? So your average fixed cost, which is next to it somewhere, average fixed cost goes from three bucks to a dollar fifty <coughs> to a dollar. So it falls very quickly because it's getting divided by two, then three, then four. Okay. On the other part of the average total cost curve, the other component of it is the variable cost. The variable cost is here, and it's increasing at an increasing rate. It starts off very low, all right. But as you add more units, then your variable cost starts to go up, 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 and it's increasing at an increasing rate. So that's what you see here is the average fixed cost is falling at a decreasing rate here. Okay? The average variable cost is increasing at an increasing rate here. The summation of these two lines, this one and this one, at any point this plus this, this plus this, this plus this, all right, it equals the average total cost. So average total cost at first is being more impacted by the average fixed cost falling. Because it's falling very quickly. This is starting to rise, but you know, it's pretty low still. As we produce more and more units of output, you know, blah, 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 we produce more and more, our fixed cost is going to continue to fall because it's getting divided, the fixed cost divided by 10 and 11 and 12, and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. The variable cost is going to continue to rise at an increasing rate due to diminishing marginal product. So at some point, the average variable and average fixed cost will intersect which is, happens to be where the average total cost curve bottoms out. That's as low as it'll get. Now, the variable cost starts to take precedence in the summation of these two lines. All right, so now the variable cost is playing a bigger role than, this is rising now faster than this is falling. Up until this point, this, this curve here is falling faster than this one is rising. And there comes a point where they intersect, and now this one is, if you added them together, this is the bigger value. And this becomes less and less important. All right? So the average total cost bottoms out at the efficient scale, which is where these two lines intersect. When they intersect, then the average variable cost takes over, and then your average total cost starts to go Good. So it also rises, the, the average <coughs> also rises at an exponential rate, right? Yeah. Well, according to this, yeah. I mean, it, not, not necessarily, but according to Okay, so everybody okay with that? Efficient scale is a good answer on the exam too. When you're, I mean, you know, there's, where is a competitive firm in terms of costs? What are they looking for? And efficient scale is uh, an answer that's out there. All right, um, so does everybody understand that? Everybody, everybody good? Well, we'll practice it again and again. All right, last one here is the marginal cost curve. Well, let me just add this in, we'll talk more about the marginal cost in a little bit. All right, so we have the marginal cost curve is the curve, big part, is the value or the price or the cost of making one more unit. All right, now, and let me explain that. And you're thinking, well, wait a minute, variable cost is, is, isn't variable cost if you make more, you get one, you know, if you make more, your variable cost goes up, so it makes sense that your variable cost is the cost of one more unit. It's actually the marginal cost, and if you look, well, let me, let me show you where this is coming from first, and then we'll... To make one unit, um, your variable cost, you see, is, is 30 cents there, so it costs you 30 cents to make one unit. Everybody see where that's coming from? Oh, gotcha. All right. Now, to make the second unit, 
How much more does it cost us? Yeah, the difference between here and here. It costs us 50 cents to make the next unit. Now, now that's not the same as that, like the average variable cost would be this divided by two, variable cost divided by two, right? Make sense? Okay, so the marginal cost for the first unit of big part, for the second, first unit is 30 cents, marginal cost for the second unit is 50, for the next third unit is 70. So the marginal cost curve is just what it costs to make one more, right? And, and again, don't get that confused with the average variable cost, which is just variable cost divided by units of output. And there's a difference there that's important that we'll talk about later. All right, so everybody okay, kind of okay with that? So let me go through it one last time. So we have the total cost is just total cost. That's what it costs to make. Fixed cost is never changing. Doesn't matter how many units of output. We have fixed cost, which is a, the rental of a lemonade stand booth or a rent or, or you know, payments to a creditor or whatever. Variable cost is, is the cost that changes with units of output. As we increase our output, our variable cost will go up. All right. Average fixed and average variable are just the fixed and variable cost divided by the units of output. All right. So, so if our variable or our total fixed cost is three dollars divided by three, then our average fixed is going to be a dollar. Average fixed per unit. All right. The variable cost is just variable cost, which is Variable cost is what it, the, the average variable cost is just variable cost divided by units of output. So 80 divided by 2 and the um, average variable cost is 40. $1.50 divided by 3, average variable cost is 50. Everybody okay with that? All right. And then average total cost is actually the summation of these two, or if you want to do, just look at total cost divided by units of output. All right? Average, somebody tell me this. And I know we just talked about it, let's do it again. <coughs> what are the properties of the average fixed cost? What is, what is the curve do and why? It falls fast. It falls fast? Why? It's being told us that. As you're dividing, you're dividing it into smaller and smaller pieces, but they're not as significant, significantly divided. Oh. The cost isn't changing. <coughs> okay, it's just getting divided amongst a greater. Right. Okay, yeah. good. So, so the fixed cost is fixed, and it just gets divided by one, two, three, four, ten, whatever. And so it just gets divided by a bigger and bigger and bigger number of units of output. So it's going to continue to fall, but at a decreasing rate, because it gets divided by 100, and then divided by 101, 102. So it's going to continue to fall. All right. Um, average variable cost. Somebody tell me what the property of that curve is. It increases at an increase, increasing rate. It increases at an increasing rate. Why? Diminishing. diminishing marginal product. What's diminishing marginal product? Um, Just in a sentence, in layman's terms, what is diminishing <coughs> marginal product? Uh, as you add more people, you produce less. Why? Because people bump into each other. Perfect. Be because people start to bump into each other. Okay. And or the good apples get picked first, and then somebody has to work a little bit harder to pick the second row of apples. So not work harder, but they're just less productive. Okay. So average variable cost increases at an increasing rate due to diminishing marginal product, which is diminishing marginal product is the property whereby as you add more units of input, each unit of input becomes less and less efficient because people start to bump into each other because the good apples get picked. You know that stuff. All right, last but not least, average total cost curve. What are the properties of the average total cost curve, and why? It's more imp impacted by average variable costs. Um, in the beginning. In the beginning. Okay, it's more, so say it again, say it again. Sorry to interrupt you, go ahead. I, I just have more impacted by average variable costs than average variable, oh wait, yeah. average, wait sounds, a second. Yeah, sounds not right there. That doesn't make sense. Decrease it and then it Okay, what, what is it in, why does it decrease at first? Because it's more affected by the average fixed cost, which decreases rapidly again. Perfect. Okay, and then it reaches the efficient scale. Efficient scale is defined as what? Well, I mean, well, I say it's that. Like equilibrium. It's, it's, 
it's the point where where what happens? The average cost of the um, average. The average fixed cost and the average yeah. variable cost meet intersect. Perfect. So where these two intersect is the efficient scale, right? And that and what's happened to our total cost curve at the efficient scale? It's minimized. It's as low as it's going to go. Okay. Then after the efficient scale, what happens to average total co uh, average total cost? After the efficient scale, what happens to average total cost? It goes up. It starts increasing. It starts to go back up. Why? Because the average variable cost is more impactful. Because the average fixed cost is keeps decreasing. Oh, perfect. It's a small number. Because the average variable cost is rising yeah. faster than the average fixed cost is falling. Good answer. Yep, it's increasing at an increasing rate. Why? Why is it increasing at an increasing rate? Diminishing marginal product. Diminishing marginal product. And what's diminishing marginal product in layman's terms? People bumping yeah. each other. More people bump into each other. Yeah, more, as you hire more workers, each worker becomes less efficient, right? Because they start to bump into each other. That's what causes your average total cost curve to go upward, right? Because as you have more workers, each worker is still getting paid $10 an hour. But the cost per unit is going up, 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 which causes the average total cost to go. So it doesn't make that sound. Can you really quickly, just like in a sentence, do total cost again? Because I had it written down total wrong. Cost. Average total cost, I mean. Average total cost? Um, well, there's a couple ways to look at it. Um, average total cost is just total cost uh -huh. divided by units of output. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's accurate. Mm -hmm. Or you could say average total cost is just the summation of average fixed and average. Okay. okay. Yeah, either one. In like the sentence, you describe <coughs> the curve like you did for the other two for the total cost. Yeah. Say that again. The like in, for average fixed cost and average variable cost, you described it in a sentence you could write down. Can you do that for? Oh, yeah. That's kind of what, I, yeah. Uh, um, okay, yeah. <laughs> That's a good, good question. Um, so and make sure that, you're on the, that I'm on the right track. Is that so? I said average fixed cost falls very fast at first. Yeah. But it continues to fall by at a decreasing rate. Mm -hmm. Average variable cost increases at an increasing rate due to diminishing marginal product. Average total cost falls at first because it's being more impacted by average fixed cost. And I'll say that again. So average total cost falls at first because it's being more impacted by average fixed cost. Then it reaches the efficient scale. When it intersects with the average in, fixed cost. In parentheses cost. Where, where average fixed and average variable costs intersect, it reaches the efficient scale. Okay. So the actual average total cost line never actually intersects with? No, it's always okay. above. It's because okay. it's the summation of these two. That's okay, that's kind of where I got Okay, and then so... Um, so average total cost falls at first because it's being more impacted by average fixed cost, reaches the efficient scale, and then starts to rise because it's being more impacted now by average variable cost. Okay. By average variable cost, okay. Right, and, and the reason is that average variable cost is, start, is increasing at an increasing rate That's, yeah. okay. uh, and then last but not least, so everybody cool with all that? And then last but not least, we have marginal cost. Somebody tell me what marginal cost is. Value of making one more unit. The va well, not the value, the, the cost. cost. Yeah, the cost of making one, one more unit. Are, are, is marginal cost and average variable cost the same thing? No. No, okay. They're different. And which tends to rise faster based on this, marginal cost or average variable cost? The which is rising faster? Variable. Variable. No, huh? marginal. Marginal, marginal cost. Sorry, <laughs> Here's an interesting little thing that happens, and this graph isn't really great. Or, let me see if I can show you. So, there's your efficient scale. And marginal cost, I didn't draw it thinking about marginal cost, but here's what marginal cost curve does. And we'll talk about this in the next class. Marginal cost is this. Marginal cost intersects average variable and average total cost where they intersect, and it also hits average total cost at the efficient scale. And that's important. We're going to talk about that in the next class. The average variable cost. Marginal cost rises fast. We'll get to that in the next class. All right. Um, any questions?